Hello again, everybody. It's like a Jack is here with the attack line from Tuesday, April 10th, 2012. All right, let's kick things off with a uh, death ruling on famous rock guitarist Ronnie Montrose, who co founded the band Montrose with the debut album that became a classic debut album, when of course, lead singer, who would become the lead singer of Van Halen, or as many people call it, Van Hagar, of course, before the Sammy Hagar. Now, Ronnie Montrose died about a month ago, and apparently now they ruled it as a suicide. According to guitar player, the San Mateo County Coroner's Office reported on April 6th that the 64-year-old died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound, and the guitarist's family has since confirmed the circumstances of his death. A statement by his family stated, By now, the devastating truth of Ronnie's death is public knowledge. We hope you can understand why he wanted to keep this news a private family matter as long as possible. We can only hope that you will choose to celebrate Ronnie's life and what his music meant to you rather than mourn his passing. Ronnie would have wanted it that way. He loved being a guitarist, a composer, a producer, and a creator of magic. He fully understood his gifts, and yet he constantly pushed himself to evolve, improve, and make better music. He did this for himself, and he did this for you. Because he adored and appreciated his fans. Please keep his energy, his joy, and his love in your heart. Apparently, from the critical depression, toxicology just found that his blood alcohol levels at 0.31 at the time of his death. All the drugs were found in the system. So, uh, there you go. I didn't really report his death. I, th I'm, I don't think I reported his death when it happened on the attack line. I don't remember. So, there you go. Death Money Month was ruled a suicide. Now, I um, have news on two of my ladies, favorite pop ladies, who kind of uh, relate in some way. You know why in a moment. First off, my girl Madonna. Now, she's had a week of highs, now it's about to be lows. Of course, her album is number one for now, maybe kicked off this week by Nicki Minaj, but maybe ending up a bad way. I'll tell you right in a moment, but yesterday she celebrated the fact that she got a 42nd number one on the dance charts with Girl Gone Wild. Now she's about to break another record. The second biggest sales drop ever. According to Forbes magazine, this week Madonna will go from selling 300,000 to 46,000 to 88% down sales second week. The Forbes article that mentioned this questioned the fact that Madonna gave away the album for free. When the album came out, everybody who got a ticket to a show online got a copy of the album. Well, and other people may not, bought, may not buy it after that. The, because whether Madonna truly topped the charts in the first place. Like I said, most of the first week sales came from the album selling with the free ticket. It inflated Madonna's numbers, putting a first for Paul Lionel in his album, Tuskegee. Baby. I'm recording. Anyway, but while Madonna may have the biggest, second biggest sales drop next to a certain other lady, who I will address in just a few moments, apparently there's a source out right now that got a rumored set list for Madonna's upcoming tour, MDNA. I'll go through the rumored set list right now in my thoughts. And no, and no comments for the peanut gallery. Uh, they're saying that the woman set list will kick off with a video intro with Erotica and Justify My Love in the intro. There are the two new songs for the album, MDNA, with Go Gone Wild and I'm a Sinner. There are some classics, including Express Yourself, Dress You Up, and a song I don't think she's ever done, Physical Attraction from the first album. Then an interlude for show Some Girls, while performing for the first time in 22 years, causing a commotion for the Who's That Girl soundtrack album. Then another new song, I'm Addicted. Then an old one from the Like a Virgin, Angel. Then another new one, Beautiful Killer. Then Secret. Then on to another video in the Louis Gang Bang. Dying of the Day. I Don't Give Up on a New Album. Four Minutes. One of my favorites from the new album, Love Spent. Masterpiece. A video in the Loots at the Holiday Remix. Give Me an 11. Deeper and Deeper. Music can turn off the radios the finale like that. But the biggest thing is Madonna's woman to perform Take a Bow for the first time ever on tour. 
set to that medley with Falling Free, another great ballad from the new album. Like I mentioned, this set list is woman. Sorry, let's put the layout. Uh, despite that, is it woman for now? So we'll see if this is a true set list. But if this is the real set list, I like it. Despite the fact there's no way of light, no hung up, or now at least La Isa for me to screw it up to make diehards like me happy and casual fans happy. So there you go. Madonna, despite a sales drop of a new album, we don't know who's number one yet. We'll find it out tomorrow. Maybe Nicki Minaj. But we know Madonna's going to go down on sales. But the new woman set list is released. So there you go. Speaking of tools and sales drops, I mentioned that Madonna's got the biggest, second biggest sales drop. But another big sales drop happened last year with Lady Gaga's sales drop following the 1 million sales of Born This Way up to like, what, 200,000 the next week. Well, Gaga's announced her European dates of a Born This Way ball. Now, she still hasn't announced no American shows yet. She announced her Asian shows, Japanese shows, earlier this year. She'll kick off the, I think it's like in, in June, is like the Australian leg. And then August to October will be all UK shows, Ireland, France, all the European countries. And maybe after that, presumably, America. So there you go. God announces European tour dates. Still waiting on American tour dates. Now on with my thoughts on last night's Dancing with the Stars. Now last night, probably in my mind, a lot of mistakes. People falling, people tripping, people missing the moves. It was like watching a bad episode of American Idol last night. Not a lot of good or great dances. There was a few highlights, including Donald Driver, probably one of the best of the night. If this was Rock Week, so it was out of everyone's element. So maybe that's why a lot of people were frazzled tonight, last night. Also doing well was Rashad Fagan and Chelsea Hightower. William Manuels besides Webb and Broken Foot now. She did very well. I like Catherine's a little out of control like Len said, but I like Toss. A lot of watching. Even Gavin went down from being the bottom two to being in the middle of the pack. And last place, Gladys Knight. Bye-bye, Gladys. She'll be leaving on that midnight train back to Georgia tonight, in my mind. No way did she make a mistake. She danced the Bohemian Rhapsody of all songs. No melody at all to dance to, like, especially ballroom dance to, so it's kind of a bad mistake from the get-go. So, uh, Gaia Leo Figueroa, bye-bye, Miss Gladys Knight tonight, that's my prediction. My second choice, if the viewers fuck it up like they have done in previous seasons, but the best part is, tonight... And I'm glad they're doing this. They're doing a dance duel. The bottom two vote getters will dance side by side, and the judges will pick who should go home and who should stay. <laughs> no more bullshit endings. They're doing it for like three weeks, they said. Finally, they're doing something about the shitty voting. At least they're going to save the best people if that happens. So I like that concept. We'll see how that goes. We're going to do it every week, not just three separate weeks in a row. So there you go. Now. Tonight's the night that all Gleeks have been waiting for, for two months. It's the return of Glee tonight. Now, a lot of questions are to be answered tonight. The biggest thing is, Glee returns tonight with the appearance of Blaine, of course, the boyfriend of Kurt's new, uh, not new, uh, Big Brother. Big Brother shows up and disrupts everything. Because I heard they do a version of Gautier's Somebody That I Used To Know. But two big questions. One. What about Rachel and Finn? Well, I heard from several sources, specifically Diana Argon, which I'll get to a character in a moment. I mean, with that, this episode will be after the wedding. It will be like a month after the wedding, so who knows if we'll see anything from it tonight, because it'll be like after, like immediately, not like not like catching up through where they left off. Mostly the aftermath of the wedding, if it happened. Of course, the biggest question on everyone's minds, the cliffhanger. What happened to Quinn? Well, at the end of last episode in February, we saw Quinn get into a car crash at the end of the episode. There is some little hints. I saw pictures of Quinn shooting the episode in a wheelchair. Apparently, her character may have got severe injuries at being in a wheelchair. Apparently, shooting a scene with Artie. And I heard one of the songs tonight is I'm Still Standing by Elton John. That could be something. I'm also hearing Diana sing solos. I don't 
I've heard some snippets. I don't think Rachel, aka Leah Michelle, sings any solos this week, as I know of. So there you go. We'll see what happens on the first new episode of Glee since February to 9 8 on Fox. That is it for this attack line. See everybody later. That and my involvement attack for the news from Zach. Thank you all very much. See you later. Have a great day. Yeah.